Welcome to Jump. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the zeros of a polynomial function. And I have nine examples here. Um, might take me a little longer, but I'm going to try to work through this as quickly as possible. So in the last video, basically what I did was I found the zeros of a polynomial when it was given in factored form. Basically, we have zero, you know, we set our polynomial function equal to zero. And then it was already factored. You know, we had your factors, uh, your linear factors multiply by each other. So it was pretty easy. We just applied the zero product property and we could solve. Um, in this case, you can see that now none of these are written as a product of its factors. So therefore, our main goal is going to be to rewrite them as a product of its factors. So to do that, we actually are actually going to have to factor. I know, lovely, right? So um, hopefully, factoring is something that. Uh, Something that is a little bit more of routine for you. If not, I have plenty of other videos you know, on help for the factor. And I don't want to spend too much time going over how to factor, uh, because basically what I'm looking into doing is uh, finding the zeros. And we got to be able to move on. You know, this, I can make this like an hour long checklist. It was just about factoring. So um, basically, the main important thing I want to show with you guys is when to find the zeros. I did pick a quadratic. Hopefully, that brings back some good or bad memories um, for you. So. First thing we want to do is set it equal to 0. And now we need to factor this. We want to rewrite it as a product of its factors. So rather than going through um, any of the techniques that I use to help you factor, uh, basically what I'm going to do is just write, OK, well, we know our first two numbers are going to be x of our factors since it equals to x squared. And then what we need to basically do is determine what two numbers multiply to give you 15 but add to give you negative uh, 8x or negative 8. And what we can see here is, well, we take out all the numbers and multiply, give you 15. Well, since they're adding to give you negative, that means both the factors have to be negative. So what's going to work is x minus 5 and x minus 3. Therefore, I write x minus 5 equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. Right? You apply the 0 property, set it equal to both equals 0. So x equals 5 and x equals positive 3. Now, again, we also have to go back to the multiplicity. Now, remember, when you go back to the multiplicity, you're going back to its linear factors and looking at the power. And what we can see is here the power of both of these is odd. So therefore, that means where the graph, where these two values cross the x-axis, or where these two values are on the x-axis, they're actually going to cross because they have an odd multiplicity. So since I kind of ran out of space, I'm just going to write odd here. All right, so now let's get into the next one. And uh, you can obviously see that all right, we're quickly starting to progress, right? Now we have a cubic function. It's f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x. Now, one of the first tips into factoring is always try to factor out the GCF first. See what they have in common, and then factor that out. Well, in this case, you can see that they all share an x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the x. So I'm going to set it equal to 0. And I'm going to factor out the x. By factoring out the x, I'm left with x squared minus 4x minus 5. Did I do the right one? Yes, I did. OK. So now you can see that, OK, I have this x here. But can I, for, so this is factored. But can I further factor this? And because it's not in its linear factored form, right? Um, linear factor would be x you know, minus or plus something. So it's not as a linear factor. So therefore, I see I go back and do the same process I did over here. All right, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 5 and then add to give me negative 4? Well, there's only two numbers that multiply to give you negative 5 that are integers. That's, uh, it could be negative 5 and positive 1 or negative 1 and positive 5. But they have to add to negative 4, which would be negative 5 and positive 1. So therefore, I rewrite this factored as x times x minus 5 times x plus 1. Okay. Now, again, I set each of my factors equal to 0. So I say x equals 0, um, x minus 5 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0. Again, ladies and gentlemen, what I am doing is I am using the zero product property. Okay? Um, then you just go ahead and solve. This is already solved, so we're good. So we have x equals 5, and x equals negative 1. And I wish I would have given myself a little bit more room, but that's OK. Again, we just go back up to our factors, our linear factors. When we go back and look at your linear factors, you can see that they all have a power of 1. Okay, So since they all have a power of 1, they again, they're all going to be odd. OK? Ew. Oh, yeah, I do have some of those. OK. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Now, this next one here, they don't all share an x. But they do share now a number. They share the number 2. So now I'm going to factor out the number 2. So when I go ahead and do that, I set it equal to 0. 
And when I factor out the number 2, I'm left with x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 4. Now, this one gets a lot of students because we, you know, they're like, all right, well, I understand how to factor quadratics. And if you factor out you know, an x from a cubic, you can factor it as a quadratic, the same. But how do you do it to the x to the fourth? And the best way that I like to tell students to think about it is forget about x to the fourth. Just substitute in, just say x squared is equal to x to the fourth. So therefore, if x squared is equal to x to the fourth, that means x is equal to, um, or x, yeah, and then x would equal x squared. Okay. So basically, what that means is I could rewrite this then as two as x squared plus four x plus um, plus four. Okay. Then what you guys can see is this is actually. Um, you can actually see when I factor that, oh, that's a perfect square trinomial, hopefully, right? Or if you factor it, you could basically say, all right, well, that's what two numbers multiply to give you 4, add to give you 4. That's x plus 2 times x plus 2, right? But really, that is 0 equals 2 times x plus 2 squared. But remember what we said, x is equal to x plus x squared. So really, I need to square that, all right? Um, Man, I ran out of space. Uh, so therefore, now that's what it's going to equal to. Now, here's not a 0. The 2 is not a 0. So that's really going to be null and void. Okay. Um, basically, what I have here is x plus 2 equals, or 0 equals 2. So therefore, because um, you, you can divide by 2 here on both sides, and that's going to go out. So I have 0 equals x squared plus 2 squared. Well, now I go ahead and solve. I get 0 equals x squared plus 2 minus 2 minus 2. Negative 2 equals x squared. Square root, square root. You can't take the square root of that. So therefore, that is going to be no zeros. So when we're taking the square root, we're trying to take the square root of a negative number. We can't do that, right? Or so I shouldn't say no zeros, but we have no real zeros. You can't solve for x in this case. So therefore, it's going to be no real zeros. The graph is actually not going to cross the x-axis at all. Um, there's no zeros in for that. Um, so therefore, multiplicity is not really going to take form either. Uh, all right, so now let's go ahead and get on to this example. So in this case, we have f of x equals 12x squared plus 17x minus 5. Um, in this example, again, we're going to set it equal to 0. And then what we're going to want to do is basically determine, well, what two numbers multiply to give us 12x and in the front two terms? Because here, it was easy. You had x and you know what two numbers multiply to give you x squared, right? Well, here, we could have 12x times x. You could have 0 equals um, 6x and 2x. And then you could have 0 equals you know, 4x and 3x. And then, ladies and gentlemen, it just kind of comes into a guess and check. You know, what two numbers multiply to give you negative 5, right? Well, negative 5 can only be negative 5 and positive 1, or negative 1 and, and positive 5. So we look into this, and basically what you're going to do is, we, I kind of like just to use a little guess and check. I'd say, all right, let's put a 5 here and a negative 1 here. We know that negative 1 times 5 is going to give you negative 5, right? But what we want to do now is determine what middle terms are going to give us to negative 17. Well, 12x times 5 is going to be way too large, right? So therefore, I know that a 5 can't be there. So forget about the signs for a second. Let's just swap the 5 and the 1. OK, well, 12, um, 12x times 1 would give you positive 12x, but then that has to be negative, right? So that's not going to work. Well, what if I swap those, made that positive, that negative? Well, that's now negative 12x. And then if you add 5x, it's not going to give you ever to 17. So the first part does not work. So now let's do the next one. Again, it doesn't matter. Just plug in a number here. All right, well, 6x times negative 1, that's going to give you negative 6. That will give you negative 10, or positive 10x, which will give you 4x. That's not going to work. So let's swap the 1 and the 5. Well, 6x times negative 5 is negative 30. That's kind of big. And then my, if you're going to have negative 30 plus 2x, that's not going to give you to 17. So that doesn't work either. OK? Um, so now let's just go ahead and do plus 5 minus 1. See how this takes us. So 4x times negative 1 is negative 4. Um, but 5 times 3x, that's going to give you negative 15 or 15x. 15x minus 4x is not going to give you 17x. So let's go ahead and swap them. So it would be negative 5 plus 1. 
So in this case, we have, um, again, if we were to multiply this, we had 4x times negative 5, which would be negative 20, plus 3x would give us negative 17, which is exactly what we want, but we want positive. So therefore, if I just swap the signs, I now have 0 equals 4x minus 1 times 3x plus 5. And then that is now going to be my factored form, and that's good. So now I just apply my 0 product property. So I say 0 equals 4x minus 1, and 0 equals 3x plus 5. Now I just go ahead and solve. So I add 1, add 1. 1 equals 4x divided by 4 divided by 4. Minus 5, minus 5, negative 5 equals 3x divided by 3 divided by 3. x equals negative 5 thirds. OK, um, so therefore I have fractions here for both of them. x equals 1 fourth. But again, what we want to do is we want to go back up and look at our our powers of our factors. And you can see the powers of both our factors are going to be odd. So therefore, we have another example of odd multiplicity. Um, all right, so now let's go and get into this one. Here we have x to the fifth plus x cubed minus 6x. Uh, so what we're going to want to do here is, again, look into see, well, what can we factor out, right? What can we take out here? So I set this equal to 0. And when I set this equal to 0, um, I now factor out an x. So that's going to give me x to the fourth plus x squared minus 6. OK, now just like I did over here, I can replace you know, x to the fourth with x squared and play, replace x squared with x and do it. I'm a little bit more familiar with this. So I'm just going to assume and say, forget about that. I already know that my two factors are going to be, instead of going to be x's, they're really going to be x squareds. So what two numbers multiply? So basically what I'm trying to show you is I know I'm going to have two factors. And those two factors are going to be x squareds. So what two numbers multiply to give you negative 6 but add to give you a positive 1, right? Because really, that's a 1 right there. Well, that's going to be a positive 3 and a negative 2. Okay. Now I go ahead and solve these. So I have 0 equals, uh, 0 equals x, 0 equals x squared plus 3, and 0 equals x squared minus 2. Now in this case, I subtract 3, subtract 3. Negative 3 equals x squared. Take square root, take square root. Again, you can see here, these are going to be no real zeros. Okay, So those are going to be two imaginary zeros. They're still, part of, they're still zeros, but they're just not actually going to be um, actual intercepts of our graph. Here, I'm going to add 2, add 2. So I have 2 equals x squared, square root, square root. x equals plus or minus. And you should remember that here. That's going to be plus or minus negative 3i, plus or minus uh, the square root of 2. Now. Next thing we need to do is go back again and look at our multiplicity. So again, we go back up to the factors, the power of the factors. And what you can see is even if these, these aren't even your linear factors, but even if we broke these down as our linear factors, they are still written to the first power. Even if you were to factor them down further, they're still written to the first power. So therefore, that means the graph is going to cross at the positive square root of 2, and it's going to cross at the negative square root of 2. It's not going to cross at these imaginary zeros. But it is going to cross at x equals 0 because that has a power of 1, or right there. So again, I'm just writing odd as odd multiplicity. Um, all right, to the next one. Here, again, let's just follow the same steps. Set equal to 0. Here I have x2. Well, now what I notice here is they both have a uh, squared, right? So I can factor out an x squared. When I factor out an x squared, I'm left with x squared minus 9. Now what I can do, set them both equal to 0 x squared equals 0. Um, and then here, x squared minus 9 equals 0. Well, take the square root, take the square root. x equals um, plus or minus 0. Well, you don't have that, so that's just 0. And then here, add 9, add 9. x squared equals 9. Square root, square root. x equals plus or minus. The square root of 9 is 3. Now, again, going back over to our multiplicity. Here, you can see that the multiplicity of my x which, is, which really could also be written as uh, x minus 0 squared. So therefore, the multiplicity here is 2. So now we have an even multiplicity. Finally, an example of even multiplicity. Whereas over here, um, again, the power of my factors is 1. So that's going to be odd. Okay. Um, so now let's just go and continue working. We've got three more examples left. Uh, Again, in this first example here, you can see that they both share a uh, 2, but it's actually negative. So I'm actually going to factor out a negative 2 as well as an x. So I have 0 equals negative 2x. 
And when I factor that out, I'm left with x cubed minus, oh, I can factor out actually an x cubed. What am I factor on an x? x? You can see that the highest power or the lowest power is x cubed. So let's factor out an x cubed. When doing that, I'm just left with an x minus 1. There you go. So now uh, what I can do here is set these both equal to 0. So 0 equals negative 2x cubed. And here I have x, x minus 1 equals 0. Well, now to solve for this, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. 0 equals x cubed. Take the cube root, take the cube root. Um, so therefore, x equals 0, because the cube root is 0, so it's going to be 0. Here, I just add 1. x equals 1. Again, though, we look at um, the power. And you can see the power of both of our zeros. Here, the power is 3. Here, the power is 1. So again, we have examples of odd multiplicity. All right, in the last two examples, we have um, what we call the factoring by grouping. All right, so when we're going to want to get into factoring, we're going to want to factor by grouping. So, you know, we went over when we had trinomial, 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 trinomial. Then I showed you how to do binomials. Binomials when you have two terms. So, a binomial, you could either use the difference of two squares or you could do factoring out the GCF. Now, I'm going to do two examples when you have four terms. And when you have four terms, basically the best method to do is to what we call grouping. So what we're going to do is we're still going to set it equal to 0, but we're going to group the first two terms and the last two terms. Then what we do is when you're factoring, you factor out the GCF of each of those grouping terms. You set it equal to 0, and then factor out the GCF of each of those um, terms. So it's going to look something like this. 0 equals, now the GCF of x cubed plus 7x squared is going to be x squared. So that's going to be x squared. And then times what will be left over is x plus 7. Then I factor out what is the GCF of negative 4x minus 28. Well, I can factor out a negative 4. When factoring out a negative 4, that's going to leave me with a x plus 7. Okay. So now what we do is we factor out the GCF again. And you can see here the GCF of this whole expression here is now going to be x plus 7. So I have 0 equals, I factor out an x plus 7. And what I'm left with is an x squared minus 4. Now I have two factors I can set equal to 0. So I just say 0 equals x plus 7, and x squared minus 4 equals 0. So now you just go ahead and solve x equals negative 7 plus 4 plus 4, x squared equals 4, square root, square root, x equals plus or minus 2. OK. Now, just remember, again, we go back up. Look at the power of the factors. We could factor that down, but it's still going to be, um, even if you factor that down to its linear factors, the multiplicity is still going to be uh, 1. So it's going to be odd multiplicity for both of those. All right, so for here, let's just go ahead and figure this one out. I'm going to kind of do this one a little bit quicker. Um, so I'm going to set equal to 0. The GCF of x cubed and 5x squared is going to be x squared. So that's going to be with x plus 5. The GCF of negative 9x and a negative 45 is just going to be yeah, here a negative 9. And that's going to leave me with an x plus 5. Then you can see the x plus 5 is common, so I'll factor that out. So 0 equals x plus 5 times x squared minus 9. Then I set them both equal to 0 using my 0 product property. Okay, Subtract 5, subtract 5, negative 5 x here, add 9, add 9. x squared equals 9, square root, square root. x equals plus or minus 3. And again, ladies and gentlemen, what we can see is um, the multiplicity of our factors, of our linear factors, even though that's squared inside, but outside, the multiplicity or the power is 1. So therefore, we have an odd multiplicity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you uh, factor to help you find the zeros of a polynomial function. Thanks.